Was gaming really better 20 years ago, or are our brains just playing tricks on us? Games, perhaps more than any other medium, age poorly. While old movies might show us things that are no longer culturally acceptable, our tactile relationship with games can make some older titles unplayable. It's an iterative medium. Every new game attempts to revise and improve our experience. And once you've become accustomed to how modern games play, going back to ageing classics can prove tricky. Yet, despite this, we can't help but love old games. And I mean that quite literally. In this video, we'll be looking at the psychological and social reasons why playing old games, and even just the act of thinking about them, makes us feel great. That's not to suggest modern games are bad, or that you should rush out to try and complete every hard-as-nails Sierra adventure. But, as you'll see in this video, our brains and our wallets love the act of diving back into the titles that hooked us on this hobby. Here are seven reasons you can't resist playing old games. To explain why we love old games so much, we've gone back to Jamie Madigan's excellent Psychology of Games website. In an article entitled Why We Get Nostalgic About Good Old Games, Madigan explains that there are specific scientific reasons why old games make us happy. One of the things that the article talks about is something called a redemption sequence. Now, basically, this means that when an experience starts as a negative and later becomes positive, we find it even more uplifting. Here's an example. If you ever got criticised or bullied for playing games, the act of forming close relationships with kindred spirits would have had a strong effect on you. Finding a friend with similar interests would have made your memories of gaming even more powerful because your story has a happy ending. That's your redemptive sequence. And for anyone who turned to games as a means of escape, these feelings of nostalgia are even stronger. A redemptive sequence doesn't have to be traumatic either. If you ever desperately wanted a game you thought you'd never get, or if you spent ages saving up for it, the act of finally getting your hands on it will elicit the same emotional high. And that's why you still feel fantastic just thinking about it. On a similar note, harking back to a simpler time can cheer us up if our current circumstances aren't great. Madigan describes nostalgia as a mental pick-me-up, and as we'll explore in a bit, playing old games and even thinking about them can serve this purpose. It might be that your current job or circumstances aren't great, and that remembering a time when you had less responsibility cheers you up. Or it could even be game-specific. Unless you're an esports pro, it's likely you felt more skilled at games when you were younger than you do now. There are various reasons for this. Perhaps you don't have the time for games that you once did. Or perhaps the challenge of playing online is too stern. Modern games let us play with people all over the world of all abilities, so you're far more likely to find someone better than you. Going online in Street Fighter V, for instance, and you'll probably get beaten in minutes. But with Street Fighter II, you were limited to playing the people on your block. And if you owned the game and they didn't, your chances of being the best were even higher. So whether or not things are actually bad, your current reality can't compete with the memories of the past. And all of this ties in directly with our next point. The truth is, we might not actually be right about how great things were, but we don't care. The act of experiencing something we agree with makes us feel good. This is called confirmation bias, and it has specific relevance in this context. Madigan says that the fact nostalgia makes us feel better suggests we're unconsciously biased towards remembering things that make us happy, and forgetting things that don't. If we're already predisposed to thinking old games were better, for example, and it feels good to think that, we're less likely to change our minds. This is because most brains want to be happy. They prefer positive memories and need less information to confirm beliefs that are consistent with our current state of mind. This means we're programmed to remember more of the good things that happen to us than the bad. So if we think the first Elder Scrolls game is the best we've played, we're likely to ignore the never-ending cliff races or frequent crashes, if indeed we remember them at all. This relates to another element that Madigan mentions. Positive memories take longer to fade than negative ones. This might be because downplaying negative memories is an effective coping mechanism, leading to better mental health. So your memories of Morrowind might not be completely accurate, but they're a sign your brilliant brain is functioning as it should. According to Madigan, well-adjusted people enjoy the feeling of nostalgic reverie, especially if it elicits memories of competence or self-regard. As Madigan describes it, it's a cognitive quirk. It's the act of recalling something that we like, but nevertheless, we attribute that positive feeling to the thing we're remembering. Go back to a let's play of an old game, for example, and see how you feel when you remember one of the bosses. It could be that they beat you the first time you played, which at the time would have been irritating, but the oh yeah factor overrides that. 
While some of these memories are obviously good, we're still naturally biased to remember events in a positive light. And that's exactly why I've got happy memories of finally beating Ornstein and Smau, rather than the breakdown which preceded it. Now, this isn't universally true. Some games have obviously aged worse than others, but for the same reasons already stated, going back and playing an old game can cheer you up. All the time, you're remembering elements you'd forgotten and getting that rush of endorphins. In this respect, it's sometimes harder to go back to an old game you missed first time around and enjoy it unconditionally. Challenging controls or the lack of modern interfaces such as a map mean that some old games will never quite click. But there's another element at play here for people who have grown up playing games and now have children of their own. In this world of hyper-realistic, often violent 3D games, retro titles provide a safe, easily understandable way to share your hobby. And while the learning curve on many older games is steep, there are no on-screen tutorials and the difficulty spikes are vicious, the simpler controls can resonate with a younger audience. If we understood Commander Keen when we were children, our children might too. It's a new way for parents to experience games, and a cool thing to share with your kids. And finally, we've got the PC-specific entry. As ever, PC owners are better served than most when it comes to playing the classics. Instead of hunting down obsolete consoles, the likes of Steam, Humble Bundle and GOG.com give us easy access to the greatest games of yesteryear. And pretty much every PC game is backwards compatible. No need to go into the attic to dig out last year's model. And it doesn't end there. Thanks to communities of talented modders, some old games are getting a fresh chance to amaze and to entertain. Games like Knights of the Old Republic can be freed from their low-res shackles and with a bit of tinkering will end up looking better than ever. Not every game is going to look right blown up on a 4K monitor, but there's a reverence and dedication to improving old games that only a dedicated PC gaming community can provide. So not only do you get the psychological thrill of going back to the titles you loved, you get to do it with better controls, graphics and maps. Does this mean you'll go back and play every old game you grabbed in a random sale bundle? Almost certainly not. But at least we've got a compelling psychological argument as to why we have to buy that Jedi Knight bundle for just $10. So there you go. If you thought playing old games made you happier, you were right. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're better. Please subscribe to Logitech G for more gaming features on how your brain tries to trick you. Like this video if it made you feel a little bit nostalgic. And thank you very much for watching.